let's take a look at doing some melodic transcription using the tools found in Cubase. So we'll come over here, let's listen to our piece. It's a nice jazz ensemble. Get the saxophone playing the melody. Now let's say I want to take this melody the saxophone is playing and notate that accurately. So one of the things that we could do is let's actually see if we see that we have our time represented in absolute time value and not bars and beats. So let's see if I turn on my click track, if the music is following the click track. It doesn't seem like the music is following the click track. So what I want to do is to have the click track follow the music so that we have a correlation to the bar and beat and what's going on with our piece. So I'm going to select uh, the drum overhead. I could use a kick or snare, just a rhythmically significant track. Go to your project menu and let's go to tempo detection. So I'll click on analyze and what this is going to do is just do an analysis of the rhythmic elements of the song and not only come up with the tempo track, which will probably be varying in nature, but will also give us a signature track. Now, since it's figuring out where the beats are, it'll give us a signature track of one four. So this would allow us to actually place it correctly in, in the case of pickup notes so that we could actually define whether your piece is gonna be in three, four, or five, four, or four, four time. So we're just about done with our analysis here. And we can see our tempo track that's been created. So let's go ahead and we'll make this, uh, we'll go ahead and listen to it. We can now hear the click or the tempo track is following the musical piece. So I'm gonna close that window and let me move my tempo track to the top as long as well as my signature track. So we can see that there's gonna be a lot of variations here in a tempo but we wanna actually find where the downbeat is of our music. So I'm gonna turn on my snap value and I could do that by clicking right here or hitting the letter J on your computer keyboard. And we want to find where the downbeat is actually falling. So let's go ahead and take a quick listen to it here. This looks like right at measure 80. So I'm gonna select my pencil tool here, my drawing tool and Right at measure 80, we're gonna set this to bars and beats, drop in a 4-4 four, four value. So now we listen to it. We now have our 4-4 four, four meter, where the meter is now, the metronome is following the musical performance. So we now have a correlation to the bar and beat to our performance. Now we see our saxophone part here and I'm going to double click the part from the project window to enter the sample editor. And this will now have our very audio tab right here. And what very audio is gonna do, it's gonna do an analysis of our saxophone line. And then as we do that, it's gonna automatically figure out what the pitch and rhythm of the saxophone part is. And then it will actually display it graphically for us so that once the analysis is done, we could almost treat it like MIDI. And we have a separate tutorial on this for doing uh, vocal tuning uh, using the very audio that goes into more depth on the very audio editor. We will touch on some of the basics here. Um, and one of the great things is that this will actually happen faster than it takes to play the audio file. So we don't have to sit there and re-record it into another tool or anything like that. So just in a matter of about 20 seconds here, we're going to take our five minute saxophone part and then we'll just automatically kind of break it down and we'll see it here in just a couple of seconds. And there we are. And now it's, our saxophone part has been broken down. Uh, graphically here, much like a MIDI key editor. Now I could use my scroll wheel to kind of actually scroll up and down. I could see my audio waveform right there. So let's go ahead and take a listen to our part. Let's zoom a little bit. Now, sometimes you may notice that different instruments may have different inflections and we could actually 
use our segment editor. So we, we probably see that the saxophone didn't play a really low note here, but this could be uh, some of the breath or the guttural sounds of the saxophone. So we could actually just kind of move that up because, um, and then if I wanted to put this into segments mode, I could come right over here and hit my tab key or just switch between pitch and warp and segments mode. Now holding down my alt or option key, instead of these being two separate notes, I can now glue those notes together so that they would be one note right there. So if I wanted to take this and actually turn it into MIDI, all I'd have to do now is click on the extract MIDI function right here. As I do that, I could actually take the inf natural inflections of the note and turn it into standard pitch bend data or static pitch bend, continuous pitch bend, or we could actually use our VST3 tuning curve, which is getting into our note expression. Uh, I want to retain the original dynamics and I could assign it to a selected MIDI track or choose to create a new MIDI track entirely. So as I do that, we'll hit OK. And on our main project window, we'll now see a MIDI track. I could double click that MIDI track. We see our notes laid out for us right there. And to go into my score editor to see the notation, let's go to my scores menu and choose open selection. As you do that, we can see kind of maybe some uh, weird interpretations here, but these can be fixed quite easily. So let's come over here to, and we're gonna put this into page mode. And as we do this, we can also now find a lot of great functions if we just go to the first line of the staff, and then we could actually just simply double click, and this would open up our score settings. And this could also be accessed right from our score menu. Now, the first thing we want to do is sometimes we want to actually figure out what the key is of the song. Uh, this kind of is looking like it's in D minor. So I'll go down for flats here and I could set my key. While I'm setting the key, I could also have the automatic orchestral transposition. So if you wanted to print it out uh, so that the tenor saxophone player would play the correct notes, or if you wanted to transpose it to alto sax, soprano sax, trumpet, French horn, etc. You could just do it right there. Now, we also have a very powerful display quantize settings here. So this means that we can quantize the appearance of the notation without actually affecting the rhythmic value. So I could say I want the smallest note to be a 16th note, the smallest rest indicated to be an eighth note rest. I could choose different syncopation modes. We could say, okay, I want it to be relaxed and maybe consolidate rests, we'll clean lengths, uh, adjust, take into account overlap. Now I also have a lot of measures of empty rests here. So if I wanted to consolidate those rests, I could come right over here and go to my layout and then go to multi rest and I could choose four. And then after every four measures, it would automatically consolidate the rest into consolidate. So with just a few mouse clicks, I could have it looking just like this. So now we listen to our part. And listen to our saxophone. And you can see in just a couple of minutes, finding the correct tempo of the recorded performance, being able to accurately translate the saxophone part into MIDI from a digital audio file makes transcription very powerful inside of Cubase.